Hello. Welcome once again to Speak Easy with Paul F. Tompkins. I am still Paul F. Tompkins, and my guest today you will recognize from her role as Sweet D on the television series It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. Please say hello to Caitlin Olson. Caitlin Olson. <laughs> hello. Ah. Something was so oh. funny about Sweet yeah. D. Sweet D. Mm -hmm. mm. That's delicious. That's very tasty yeah. indeed. What are we drinking? Uh, it's uh, like a cucumber, gin, lime. I don't remember the name. I don't have to. Is this, a, <laughs> is this a, your own creation? No, it's got a name. It's either an East Ender or a West Ender or something. I don't know. I just said, this is what I like, and then they handed it to me and gave me the name. I've already forgotten it. I like your improvisational yeah. spirit. Yeah, yeah. That's your background? You come from improv? That's right. Uh, groundlings, yes? The Groundlings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and you did that for how many years? Like 200 years, I think. <laughs> it was about 200. Was it a long time? It was, it's such a, it's such a great program. Uh, there are a lot of level one and two classes, but there's only like two level three classes going on at a time and then one level four class. So you're on a waiting list between two and three and three and four. So the whole program takes forever to is get level through. Is level three when it gets really serious and you're in the company? No. You're not in the company until after level four, they pick a few people to join the Sunday company. Right. And then there's the main company. I never got to the main company. So there, <laughs> did you not really? I got kicked out of the Sunday company. I did make it to the Sunday company. Why did you get kicked, kicked out, out of the Sunday Doesn't company? Doesn't that sound terrible? They just said, we got to let you go. Well, most people get kicked out because not very many people make it to the main company. So right. you have like a year and a half run in the Sunday company and they choose like people to join the main company. The problem is it's the actors in the main company mm -hmm. who are doing the choosing. So there's not like an outside board. An I impartial... like to think it's that I started working and I wasn't able to <laughs> participate as much in the right. Sunday company and come up with as many new sketches a week. Mm -hmm. Every week you need to come in with like 10 new sketches which is really a hard thing to do every week. So in my head, because I started working and got busy, probably I just wasn't very good. Now- I'll never know. I have so many questions. Okay. Um, um, did you enjoy the process and the pressure of having to come up with all that material? I, I, I hated it and loved it at the time. It was, it was such great practice. Mm -hmm. And I enjoyed the pressure of it because I would not have done it by myself. And I came up with some really good stuff. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, by every Sunday we had a brand new show. You're so proud of yourself for doing all that hard work. And then you got a few sketches in and they went well. It's, it's great, but it definitely becomes all encompassing. It's mm -hmm. your whole life. I it's was all you can think about all week long. Yes, I yeah. mean, everyone had like a couple part-time jobs that would let you go if you had an audition or a writing meeting. Like, it's just, you know, you're working late at night to make a little bit of money. It's, it was all about the groundlings. But when I got kicked out, <laughs> I was devastated for about two days. And then it was like, <gasps> just all this relief. Plus then you can put all that energy into, cause you're used to working 12 hours a day on right. thinking of ideas and all that stuff, which I wasn't used to doing before that. Mm -hmm. Now you can put all that into auditioning and finding jobs. And I feel like a lot of people who got kicked out really started working a lot right afterwards. Do you think they kick people out on purpose? People mm -hmm. that they think have the most promise. That's exactly what I think yeah. they do. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. It's like Harry and the Henderson. They saw a lot in me, so That's they right. got rid of me immediately. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's going to be a star. Mm -hmm. Get out. Yeah, get out of here. You said you're a competitive person. Mm -hmm. Groundlings, I think, is maybe, of, of those types of groups in Los Angeles, is maybe the most competitive, it right? It is, yeah. And that's, that competition is encouraged. Yeah, uh, there's just no way around it. You yeah. have a group of people, there's only a small number of sketches that are gonna get in. Mm -hmm. They're very critical, which they should be. They have high standards. It's just, uh, and it's interesting because you, you want to work with the funniest people because mm -hmm. your sketch will be better, but then you also want to be the funniest person. It's it's an interesting thing, but it's great. I think it was healthy. We were all really good friends. It was just everyone wanted to be great, so it kind of lifted you. It, it, it was um, it was it was a, a challenge to you. Are you a person who's at at peace with your competitive nature? Do you does it sometimes bother you, or are you like? Do you feel like it's it's just enough to kind of keep things interesting? I have an interesting thing about competition, especially now that I have two baby boys. Mm -hmm. My husband and I have completely different takes on it. He thinks it's very healthy. I think it's healthy if you're coming about it the right way. I happen to also be a perfectionist, which is a terrible thing, because then I'm constantly disappointed in myself, mm -hmm. and which is not fair because I'm trying to give 100% to everything, mm -hmm. like being a mom and 
and acting and being the funniest and ha and it's just I'll drive myself crazy. Yeah, I feel like perfectionism uh, it really boils down to you have it's expectation. It's, you have a vision of how things are going to be, yeah. and if it's not exactly the way you pictured it, yeah. you have failed completely. Yes, so I beat myself up, which makes yeah. it very hard to live in the moment and just. Mm -hmm. Uh, like, like I hate improv. I hate it. I love sketch. That's why I love the Groundlings. But there was right. a lot of improv. Improv. I absolutely hate it because mm -hmm. I I don't know that I'm going to be extremely funny. Right. And that's not fair. Like I can't just relax and have fun. Right. I'm hating this right now. Why are you? I really? hate it. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. I like you because you're nice to me, but it's intimidating. But does this kind of thing make you yes. uncomfortable? It yes. does. Totally. I don't know what you're going to ask. I don't know what I'm going to say. I don't know. Not always. This is fine. It's okay to say if it isn't. <laughs> you know what I mean? You're upsetting me. But, <laughs> but the, whole, the whole thing, and this is good. The, right? This is great. And yeah. it's there for you. Cheers. If you need it. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah, I do, right now. So I love doing our show. I love shooting. And we even improvise on our show, yeah. but we also it's also scripted. So it's not pressure to come up with the story and what's going to happen. I'm just having fun. That's yeah. the kind of improvising it's, I like. It's embroidering around the edges, I like to say. Yes. Where there is definitely a script mm -hmm. that's solid, and then you can have some fun uh, with that as yeah. well. Yeah. Yes, that I love. And then come publicity time when there's interviews and things, then I panic because mm -hmm. it's like, wait, I don't want to do that part. I just want to do the fun part. <laughs> you don't want to have that phone conversation where they're like, tell us three funny stories. No. Also, apparently I say like a lot and I use stalling phrases like, you know, and when that is written out and I read that in interviews, I look like the dumbest person in America. <laughs> I look so stupid. So I'm like, what? Is that what I really sound like? <laughs> and if you're typing it up, can you just take a couple of the likes out for me? Yes, exactly. <laughs> I Do they I had all a... need to be in there? I know. I thought I had a really good point, and you've ruined it by adding all my likes in. Just take some out. The worst part of that is not being aware that you're doing it. I had no idea. Yeah. Thinking I had a great conversation with someone, and then reading it and being like, oh, doing it again. It's always sunny in Philadelphia. This is season what? Nine. Season nine. Yeah, that is pretty wild. That's a long time. That's a lot of seasons. Yes. <laughs> What's the most seasons you're allowed? I don't even know. There's got to be a cap, right? Meet the press. What season are they on? 18. Ooh, that's a lot. That's what we're shooting for. So you're halfway there. We're halfway there. That's good news. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Uh, the show is famous for uh, make having fun with taboo subjects. Mm -hmm. um, and you guys kind of embrace that. Um, is that a, a style of humor that you have always embraced? Yes, but I think that people try to do that in a way that is not funny to me at all. Mm -hmm. There's a really fine line where you kind of tip over into crass or gross or just inappropriate just for being inappropriate. That's not funny to me. Mm -hmm. But our show is a social commentary also. Mm -hmm. I think if you watch it, you can see that there's a definite point of view that we have about right. that subject. Um, it's satire. Yeah, we're yeah. making fun of these ridiculous people, mm -hmm. uh, but we're using that to discuss a topic. But I don't think we are hurtful or gross. Is that mean? I don't think it's mean. Yeah. But I think if you watch a clip here or there you and didn't watch the whole show, you could definitely say, oh, that show is just mean. You've done risky stuff before. You did. Uh, punked and another show called Meet the Marks, right? Um, mm -hmm. Which again gets into riding a line. Yeah. Where it's like, how okay is this? And I didn't, I wasn't comfortable with those. Right. And that was really early on in my career. I, I didn't think it was funny at the time. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's funny now. Mm -hmm. But I, I, you know, I, I didn't, I was young and there were parts of it that were funny for sure. Some of the punk stuff was really funny, the innocent stuff, but like really uh, humiliating somebody and hurting their feelings yeah. and we, tipped into that and meet the marks and it made me uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. I didn't think it was funny. But I mean, you don't necessarily know how you're gonna feel about that stuff until you do it. No, and I, and I thought, you know, I was funny in the audition and it was fun, the, uh, the subjects were funny and um, the dialogue was funny, but, but it, practically, and it ended up being a little bit mean and yeah. humiliating. Yeah. Humiliating somebody isn't funny. Like yeah. they probably went home and were horrified. Right. We were like, we got it. We got a good one. Nice well, there's, work. There's always the he end. cried. Isn't right. that great? <laughs> there's always the end of every prank thing like that where the you see the person uh, who is the, the target, mm -hmm. um, they laugh. And so that's supposed to make you think, oh, this is all okay. Yeah. Well, they're just relieved who that it's not real. Yes, and who doesn't <laughs> laugh when they're, hor they're so uncomfortable? Right. 
that's when I laugh the most. Exactly. Yeah. Like, oh, no, no, I knew. <laughs> I knew. I knew. You this guys is stuff. You guys are awesome. You got me. <laughs> when you first uh, read the, because you auditioned for it's always sunny. Yeah. You're, you're married now to Rob McElhaney, yes. who's one of the creators of the show. Um, but you didn't know each other before you did the show. You yeah. met at the audition. Mm -hmm. When you first read that script, were you leery about it at all, or having based on prior experiences, or did you get it right away? Uh, I thought it was really funny right away. And it was, it was pilot season, and I had read a ton of stuff that was all kind of the same, and this was just so unbelievably different, mm -hmm. and that's what I liked about it. Mm -hmm. So I kind of knew right away that I liked it. Right. I just come off a little show <laughs> called Kelsey Grammer Presents the Sketch Show. That's right, Kelsey Grammer Presents the Sketch mm -hmm. Show. That um, was a, a different low budget right. show um, where I had a different experience. That's right. And so I said to myself on that show, you know what, <laughs> the next thing I take, will have to be funny. It doesn't have to have a lot of it doesn't have to have a lot of money right. involved. Right. Now for the viewer, mm -hmm. Kelsey Gamer presents the sketch show. Mm -hmm. That's where we first met. We did. We were on that program together. We did. It was an adaptation of a British sketch comedy show. Yes. Called The Sketch Show. Mm -hmm. There was uh, four of us Americans who mm -hmm. went over to London yes. to shoot this show. Yes. They uh, took us out of our comfort zone. They put us somewhere we had no help. Into the bitter cold we went. Right. Mm-hmm to do these sketches that other people had done yeah. and uh, directed to do them exactly the way the other people had done. Right, turns out maybe it needed a bit of an adaptation to make it appropriate or That's one school of thought. funny for Americans. <laughs> they thought if we just gave them a Southern accent, that would do the trick. We said maybe we could rewrite it a little bit right? and then things happen and the things turn out differently than you know how you thought, and that's okay. It was a good experience. I met you. That's right. We got we got, we got a we friendship out of it. Yeah. At least we got to uh, get blind drunk every night. Yeah. For two months. I've got no problems with the pubs. We've had a lot of dads on this show. Oh. You're our first mom. Really? Yes. So I'd be curious to know how has motherhood um, informed what you do, informed your job, your your night job, let's say. Yeah, I, it's changed everything. Fortunately, I had my first baby deep enough into our show where I could have a little bit of control. I didn't feel really uncomfortable saying, hey, I, I'm stopping exactly at two o'clock because I have to go feed the baby. Right. But if it was like my first season on a show, that would have been uncomfortable. So I've got it figured out on our show and they can come and visit. Um, but I wouldn't take a job now unless I really, really, really loved it because it takes me away from them. Because right. if I'm not working, I'm working at that mm -hmm. and it's more important. Although then I have to not beat myself up for leaving them and going to work because it's good for them to have a role model of mm -hmm. a person who works and does something for themselves. So yeah, it's like really screwed with everything. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's, it's that, that balance for you is different than it is for uh, a male actor. And yes, that's just true. It is. I'm just hormonally designed to take care of them. Mm -hmm. I could feel, I never had like a postpartum thing going on, but I could feel that those hormones were doing their job. I am so connected to them and keeping them not just alive and safe, but happy. When they cry, everything shuts down. I have to take care of that. And that's because I had them inside of me for 10 months. Mm -hmm. Like, it's just. Men don't have that as much. It's a month too long. It's 10 months, I will, I will say right now, it's 40 weeks. It's 10 months. I don't know where that nine month thing came from, but it was an extra four weeks from okay. that. No, so I don't, ab absolutely. In fact, the first one was an extra six weeks it from sounds, that. It's normal. I'm upset. I feel better. I'm better now, thank you. Um, uh, do you try to be together with the family as much as humanly possible? Like. You, because you grew up in a pretty normal environment, yeah. right? And are you trying to replicate that as much as possible for your kids? Yes, but... But it's hard. It's really hard. <laughs> Dinner time for them is like 5.30 or 6, but mm -hmm. Rob's not home until 7.15, yeah. and they go to bed at 7.30. So we spend morning time together. Right. That's kind of our, that's our thing. That's it, 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 yeah, it's tricky. When you first met Rob, I, well, not when you first met him, but when you guys first became a couple, I remember you, I remember when we saw each other, you had just started dating, and you were talking to me about him, and you said a wonderful thing. I did? Yes, you did. You I don't said, remember this. You were just telling me about him, and you said, he's kind of my hero. Oh, that's nice. 
Because you really admired that he had made his own thing, mm -hmm. you know. Um, he had this thing that he wanted to do, he had this vision that he wanted to accomplish, and he just went ahead and did it. Mm -hmm. And uh, that you were really inspired by that. Is that the thing that, I mean, is it that, that side of him that made you fall in love with him? Yeah. He's still kind of your yeah, hero. Yeah, he's still my hero. <laughs> he is. He's. I'm. I'm. Uh, I'm forever impressed by him and his drive. And um, he puts a really appropriate amount of pressure on himself. Mm -hmm. So whereas I kind of beat myself up if I'm not doing it well, he he doesn't have that part of it. He just he works really really hard and he expects big things. Mm -hmm. But he also has a balance. You know, like he likes to spend a lot of time with us and he takes time for himself and he works really hard. But he was a waiter two weeks before he sold the, not two weeks before, I think he sold the show and still was waiting tables for several weeks while they were shooting it. Right. I'm, I'm proud of him. And he's one of those people that doesn't, he's not going to like be proud of himself. So I'm extra proud of him. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. He doesn't brag about things. He doesn't, he just works really hard right. and believes in himself, which is really cool. It's a good dad for your kids. Do you feel that, uh, that has rubbed off on you at all? Do you feel like? He's very inspiring, yeah. yeah. I mean, I would love to do movies. For mm -hmm. whatever reason, I'm not doing them. Mm -hmm. And his whole thing is, why are you still auditioning for, I'm very p picky about uh, the stuff that I would like to do, but when I find something that's funny, every funny woman in town also found it and is auditioning for it. So he's just constantly saying, write your own, write your own, write your own, create your own thing. That's so daunting to me, mm -hmm. uh, but he did it. You know, so yeah. he's like, just do it. But then it's also, to be fair, uh, it's very easy for the person who made their own thing and it worked out. Yes, to, to say, say, well, this is what you do. Thing. Yeah, yeah exactly. but it's better to try it than sit around and complain about not getting anything and not having it happen for you. So True. I'm trying to let him rub off on me. I'm still very hard on myself. <laughs> you, you did a, a voice for a movie? I'm doing um, Finding Nemo 2. Can you believe it, Paul? No. Are they going to put these together and make the Finding Nemo saga the way they did with The Godfather, where it will be in chronological order? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's, what are you? The whole family is going to fall apart by the end, and I can't give you details. <laughs> no, but I understand. It's messy. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. what, are you, what do you play in Finding Nemo too? Uh, I play a, kill, a killer whale mm -hmm. who is Dory's sister, adopted mm -hmm. sister. And the whole story, it's, I don't know how much I'm allowed to tell. They're very secretive there at Pixar, but it's a, it's a Dory story. Mm -hmm. I rhymed that. It was did fun. Did you hear it? I did hear it. I didn't even do it on purpose. Sometimes these things just come out of me. Exactly. Mm -hmm. I think it's like the universe trying to mm -hmm. tell you, have fun. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, are you a fan of Pixar movies? Yes. Is this something you've wanted to do for a long time? Yes. Especially since I've had kids, because nothing I've done are my <laughs> kids allowed to watch. Right. So um, they called and said, we want you to do this killer whale. And I was like, are you serious? Me? Yes, I'll do it. I love Pixar movies. They're amazing. Um, Especially now that I have a three-year-old who, mm -hmm. uh, we don't do a lot of TV, he can do Sesame Street, but he can watch Toy Story. We've seen it 300 times. He loves all three of them. He loves all the characters. They're, Even it, the scary one, the third he, one? It, the scary one is his favorite one. He finds the bad guy in each movie, and if he's not sure who it is, he'll ask me who the bad guy is, sure. and that's his favorite person. Oh, ooh, ooh. Ooh. He loves that lots of hug and bear. Boy, mm -hmm. oh boy. I know, I don't know what's it's wrong like a with little the... dexterous. I know, maybe. That's exciting, though, in a way, isn't it? Uh, no. No? What, no. What's wrong with I don't know. I don't think he'll kill me. I really don't well. think he'll kill me. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> did you enjoy the experience of doing are you enjoying? Are you still doing it right yeah. now as we speak? I'm doing it right. I do it in two days. I are you whatever. acting with anybody, or is it just you in a room by yourself? Well, that's what I asked when I first went up to Pixar to meet with right. them, which, by the way, is the most amazing place on earth if you can ever get there. But anyway, my first question was, will I be doing this by myself, or will? Because most of my stuff is with Ellen. Mm -hmm. and they said, believe it or not, sometimes actors are a lot worse when they're acting with other people, and then they get better performances. Uh, solo. Mm -hmm. So I asked, who are you talking about? Because I was very Because <laughs> that to me tells a lot about a person. <laughs> like, who would rather be by themselves acting? And I got answers, but I'm not going to share them with you. Understood. Um, so my last session, my first session was alone. My last session was with Ellen. Mm -hmm. And then this week is alone. So they kind of mix it up a little bit. Did you feel you got better or worse when Ellen was there? I loved doing it with Ellen. I loved it. I was better. She made me better. <laughs> it's like the old tennis game analogy. Correct. When you have a good partner, mm -hmm. they elevate you. They right elevate there. you. Mm -hmm. Would you do It's Always Sunny forever if need be? No, because at some point, 
you wear out your welcome. I right. don't want to do, I think we're all on the same page with, you know, you want to quit while you're ahead. Mm -hmm. but we're in our ninth season, but we only do 10 episodes a season now. Right. So it's not really, I, hopefully it's not irritating by this So point. it's still, <laughs> well, that's all I, I anyone can ever I ask. can only hope that it's not irritating. Yes, mm -hmm. I am smelling a billboard. <laughs> <laughs> still not irritating. That's right. But I, have, you, have you guys discussed like an end point? To yes. say that, oh, okay. Yeah. Obviously, you're not going to ask that question, so I don't even yeah. bother asking. Yeah. But yeah, no, I think we'll have the luxury of being able to write our final episode. We, mm -hmm. <laughs> I do a lot of the writing. <laughs> I'm really involved in the in the storylines and the writing. <laughs> if there's anything that you think is funny, I probably wrote it. The ninth season mm -hmm. of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia mm -hmm. is airing right now. Yes. On FXX. FXX. Look at you getting ready. To say Are we going to cheers? We're going to cheers again. Can Caitlin, what a pleasure to see you. Thank you. Thank you for being Thanks, here. Thanks, Paul. That is all for this edition of Speakeasy with Paul F. Tompkins. Join me again next time when my guest will be a different person. This is a good drink. Mm -hmm. Find out the name. Oh, I feel like you're it's, uh, trying you got, to hit me in the face every it time. It did. You got slapped. Why by didn't that I just take it off cucumber. from the beginning? Well, because it looks so nice. The presentation is everything. It did. It's better. Thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe and check back every Monday to see who I interview next. And for more info about Speakeasy, visit MadeMan.com.